Let me first go to uh, London, Dr. Shahrar Ali, and ask you, uh, I hate to start with opinion polls, but let me start with one. Anyways, opinion polls are pointing to no overall winner in the May 6 polls, with some predicting that uh, Labour is actually going to end up with the biggest number of seats in Parliament after more than a year of the Conservatives enjoying a double-digit lead. W why do you think uh, the gap has narrowed? Well, there is everything to play for, and you're quite right to um, shed some doubt over the value of opinion polls. I think where it's interesting is to see that the Conservative Party seems to have got very nervous just through the opinion poll lead going down. And I think this tells us something about their substance. And moreover, the Labour Party doesn't have much to uh, stand for either. I mean, if you look at some of the big issues of the day, and the impact of climate change, for example, with 200,000 people actually attributed dying as a result of man-made climate change. We need to be pursuing meaningful solutions that create sustainable jobs across the country. And the Green Party is the only party pursuing an ambitious agenda which will actually provide sustainable jobs in green renewable energy and efficiency, for example. These aren't the kind of things that you will hear the other parties talking about, but these are the kind of things that will actually result in um, jobs in meaningful industry and a quality of life at the same time. We have over 300 people standing across the United Kingdom, a full slate of over 70 candidates in London, and these are the things that people on the streets want to hear. It's bread and butter issues, decent public services, health, housing and transport included. Dr. Shahra Ali, I mean, uh, you, you're in London. Uh, let me get a general sense from you. Is it really going to make a difference uh, what hands change in the government and uh, who's uh, uh, chosen in terms of uh, what uh, the UK is suffering from? I mean, you mentioned, uh, well, uh, the economy, and that's probably the biggest focal point here, isn't it, the economy? No matter who comes, are they going to be able to fix that and turn things around? We can fix it if we pursue a radical economic agenda, which doesn't just put one eye on the bottom line because somebody's paying for that bottom line down the line, so to speak. The thing is, is that it's costing the planet every time we consume more than we can actually bear uh, on this planet Earth. We, that is actually having an impact on future generations. We cannot afford that in the real sense. People are having to work increased hours when they do have a job simply to sustain a mortgage which isn't actually costing the true value of that house. So we need to start thinking radically in a value-laden way. And green politicians, when they are elected increasingly, like for example, we can get MPs this time round on a first-past-the-post system in Lewisham, Deptford, Darren Johnson and Adrian Ramsey in Norwich South and our own Caroline Lucas in Brighton Pavilion, you know, 30-odd percent already even on your opinion polls. We can get these Greens elected. They have a, a supreme voice then in Parliament, which is still the focus of UK politics, agreed. But they will have a supreme voice and they will be acting with renewed vigour uh, compared to your standard MP. So of course we can have a massive impact on the complexion of the House of Commons, not just with respect to who has overall balance of power, but to a new fresh intake of bold ideas that are actually going to have an impact going into the 21st century when we're actually running out of time to have that, that impact. Dr. Shahra Ali, I mentioned uh, this question in uh, the introduction uh, to uh, this news analysis, and I want to address that to you. And uh, basically it has to deal with what the voters are going to be asking themselves. Uh, and that is, do I like the present government or who do I trust to run the country? for the next five years. Do you agree that that's going to be the key question that's going to be going back and forth in voters' minds? Of course, that's going to be a big question for any voter. A general election is an important uh, period in the electoral cycle. Um, we don't presume to know in every case what the voter thinks, and actually that comes back to the heart of trust in politicians. We ask and we listen. And it's very important that we understand that uh, politics is a kind of a contract with your voter and with the public, and they are your equal, and you are, your, you are their servant, if anything. And where Greens have got elected, like for example in, in Kirkley's council, and they've rolled out free home insulation, 
These ideas, they're not even rocket science. They can be rolled out across the country if there is the will, the political will. Instead of spending money on, on arms and renewing Trident and ID cards, we should be pursuing these initiatives. There is money in the bank if it's spent wisely. So Greens, as has been demonstrated, when they are elected, people come back for more, for good reason. We're too busy and preoccupied with trying to address the urgent political issues of the day to be thinking about our own self-aggrandizement. Trust will also be an issue in this general election, and so it should be. And uh, if you mention, uh, I can see that you're very much uh, the ideology of what the Green uh, movement can obviously present in terms of, uh, well, in so many ways, in terms of opportunities. Uh, how do you feel that that's going to actually incorporate itself into, well, uh, dealing with some of the major problems that the UK is dealing with? We're looking at the, the financial crisis, which Gordon Brown has set up a model for, uh, for the rest of the world to follow. But was that even a correct uh, idea in the approach that was used? Because still, uh, the UK is suffering from a major recession. We are. And first of all, you need to recalibrate, if you will, the way economics is actually put on a pedestal. Um, for example, if you look at the way that uh, Brown, over a period lasting some months, tried to encourage people to turn in their old vehicle and to get the car scrappage scheme this is, and to get a new model in order to prop up an inherently unsustainable industry. That doesn't take any account of the embodied energy, the amount of raw materials that goes into manufacturing a new car. Okay. You would be better I apologize. Off, I'm going to have to cut speaking, you because we've on the ran road. out of time. I, my apologies there.